my name is Natino Thompson. I will be talking to you today about the LGBTQ plus community and the church in the Bahamas. I'm going to share my screen and we'll just hop right into this, okay? So I believe with all my heart, um, and from the research, right, that I've conducted, that at the epicenter of the debate concerning homosexuality, LGBTQ rights in the Bahamas is the Christian church. And I believe that if LGBTQ people are to attain the, right, the fundamental rights that they so deserve, um, there has to be a challenging of the church's power within the space known as the Bahamas. Um, and just to uh, understand, just so that we can understand the power that uh, I'm talking about, um, which will be coming up in the clip, as well as historically, no prime minister has not been advised by a member of the Christian church or um, people or members within the Christian council. And so this is very important to understand. So this clip I'm going to show you right now um, is Maddie Knowledge um, telling the prime minister in May during COVID um, when, the, when everything had been shut down and they were opening up slowly, quote unquote, um, and bars were being opened, and be opened before the church, she told him that it, it, it's a threat, kind of, right? She told him more else. Um, you have seven good days to open up the church. And it did happen in less than seven days. Um, and I'll, I'll just let it speak for itself and then we'll come back and talk about the power um, that this kind of, you know, um, I guess, takes on within the space. But it's the church that has to, where people are trying to come. Yeah. But it's going to get help. Come on. And you are standing in their way. Come on. Listen to me, Prime Minister. Come on. I give you seven good days. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Seven good days. Yes. The church must open. With sure seven good days. Come on. On the judgment of God. The hand of God. Come on. Will be against your government. Come on. Oh, my God. Come on, Prime in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. With himself, you are better be making. I, I know, listen to me. Somebody say you are talking about the Prime Minister. No, I am not talking about the Prime Minister. I am talking to the Prime Minister and the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. The Bahamas is not a dictatorship. The Bahamas is it's not a communism. Hey. The Bahamas a democracy. Come on. Are you hearing me, sir? Come on. Come so, yeah. Um, the logic is a little bit, you know, messed up, but it speaks to the power, right? And then I think the nuances here is that persons like Mari Nodich, who have a church in, in I guess, in, in American or Canadian, I guess, biggest metropolitan areas, she'll own, like, what will be considered, like, a storefront church, right? But how Starfront Church has grown to a bigger mega size. They have their own building. But the nuances between the doctrine and the way that they carry out their doctrine and what um, the Christian council claims to be what they represent, I've seen all the time. And they, they, they tell you out of their own mouths that they don't really follow the Christian council because the Christian council can be very selective in the issues that they choose to speak on. Um, LGBTQ issues are always something that they speak on, but when it comes to other issues, they can, they're, they're, they're often silent as like when really in relation to domestic violence and all these other issues. Um, the Church of the Planet itself is an obstacle in the way of LGBT, LGBTQ people getting their rights. Um, this can be seen from the message that are preach it, preached within the pulpit. They can preach explicitly, they can be wrapped in explicit hatred or they can be mild, you know, in their undertones. Um, LGBTQ people in the church, they learn to internalize self-hatred, internalize homophobia, internalized heterosexism. Um, again, if you want to know what that is, you can read my paper because we're, you know, we're pressed for time. But these internalizations then cause LGBTQ plus people to perpetuate these acts of violence on themselves and others like them. And I think one of the issues that uh, is often overlooked is that within scripture, a very queer characters and a, and a queer reading of these scriptures would, would offer you insight. One of the main stories that I use within the paper is the idea of, of the story of Queen Esther, which I think is it mirrors the kind of process that LGBTQ people um, go through in trying to come out the closet. David and Jonathan, that he loved um, Jonathan more than any love for, uh, uh, for a woman. Like, it's very queer. And you know, there are other um, texts that we can read in that way. Um, the Christian Council is a lobbyist organization. Um, you know, they claim to reflect the attitude of um, the Christian principles. The, this power is derived from this, you know, the preamble 
because they say constitution was actually in the preamble that the Bahamas is a Christian, quote unquote Christian nation, but we we know for sure that it's not such a thing, um, and, and it's not a theocracy. She says it's a democracy. Um, Brokeback Mountain was banned by the Bahamas Plays and Films Control Board, which uh, uh, which has a representative from the Christian Council on it. The gender equality referendum. Um, was sabotaged by the Christian Council who conflated LGBTQ same-sex marriage with two of the questions. It was, it, it was a lot. Um, but, like, these are the things that they do. Um, I think for us to have a great conversation about this, we have to understand the law. Um, no protection exists um, because sexual orientation is not included in the Constitution. Um, so those are the forms of discrimination and many, many more can happen. The age of consent in the Bahamas is 16 for same sex, of 16 for heterosex, sexual sex, and quote unquote, and then 18 for same sex, which is discrimination at its core. And I think we need to understand that in 1991, the decriminalization only decriminalized private spaces, not public spaces. So same sex loving people from 1991 to 2009 um, faced up to 30 years in prison if they were caught having sex in public. Now, people may say, you know, well, I don't, why would they want to do that? People do that in the, in, 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 in their vehicles, um, I've I've gone to the beach and seen numerous heterosexual couples. You can hear the noises and all of that, and I think that it's just something that people do. Um, Same-sex marriage is legal in the Bahamas. However, the discrimination occurs where you must get a marriage license, and that is given at the discretion of the minister. You have to get an application for that. The application is normally refused to people who they deem to be queer or who is known, quote unquote, to be effeminate. Or if they if they know you, like Alexis has said that when she went to get an application, she was the woman was like, "I know you. We can't. Um, you're not getting this. That's discrimination right there." Um, I want to play this um, because this highlights the dynamic, the dichotomy, the insidiousness that out of one mouth, Mary Knowledge can preach. Um, and if you go through her sermons, you'll see that she's, um, there'll be anti-LGBTQ -LG messages. But she has, a, she has an LGBTQ daughter who's a musician within the church. And we know this because after that, um, her, the video that I talked about, it went viral. And it, she got backlash because of it, right? She received harsh criticism. And this is, how, this is one of the instances we know. Um, we know that um, um, this because um, the daughter's ex-girlfriend came out and told us, a couple of days after, because they had been like in this feud. Of the stepdaughter, I was mm -hmm. in a relationship with Maddie Hodge's um, daughter, Melissa Hodge, and I just wanted. What? To well, what? What type? What? Hold, hold on. What type of relationship? Um. Uh, Y'all were dating. A relationship. Relationship. Okay. Dating. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, they. Her parents knew about us being in a relationship for a long time, and. The, one of the reasons why I left her is because I found out the rumors that she was, was touching little girls in the church was true. Number. Now, um, again, whether these how these allegations play out, like that's another matter. But I wanted to highlight this issue because it's very important that we understand what's going on, and we we interrogate exactly how these function. Like she's not the only pastor that that, that is known to have LGBTQ children, but a very anti-LGBTQ, and so. This ends my presentation, but this is just a window into what's happening in terms of the relationship between LGBTQ community and the church. Thank you again. And if you need any assistance, I will link my website and my email. You can send the questions and we'll go from there. Um, I'll do my best to answer um, any questions that you guys have. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Natino, very much indeed. I'll join you. One of the most difficult things in the world must be the situation where a parent finds, his, finds out that his son or daughter is gay or lesbian. I've often wondered what I would do in that situation. I've not been put in it. My three children have not, um, not gone that way, but I hope that if I would be in that situation, I would stand with them and defend them to the last breath of my body. I'm their father. And I hope the same would be the case if I was their mother. I would defend them to the last. So thank you for that, Natino, very much indeed. And I hope you'll be here for the question and answer. Uh, second um, panel speaker, 
is the Reverend Patricia Shearton Bisnouth, the Chief Executive Officer of the Caribbean Family Planning Association. So welcome, Patricia. Uh, 